my name is Beck and welcome to another Author Spotlight video. This time I'm going to be talking about how you could potentially read Becky Chambers' works and where I think you should start based on my experiences and my ratings of her work. So firstly I wanted to talk about The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and this book is the first in her Wayfarers series. It is a companion series but I would recommend reading them as if they are books one, two, three and four in a series. I always struggle to sum up Becky Chambers' work because they seem to invoke so much feeling and they do so much thematically but not a lot of the time do they do a lot in terms of fast action and moving plot. In terms of plot I would say this one is her strongest for plot but her other work while I don't have as strong plot as this one does are still worthwhile based on the themes and the characterization that she teases out of all her interactions. In this one we follow Rosemary Harper and she's joining the crew of the Wayfarers and the theme is finding family and found family so if you love it when characters come together with deeper understandings of culture and identity and they form long-lasting friendships, this would be the book for you because that's one of the reasons that I personally adored it. I don't want to say too much again about what it entails because if I do it will spoil the character trajectories for you but essentially the characters of the wayfaring crew they punch wormholes through space so they are on a long haul from point A to point B so that they can punch a wormhole from point A to point B so it's quicker for anyone who comes after them but they have to go on the long haul so they can make the ends meet if that makes sense. So Rosemary Harper is our essentially our main character and she goes on this kind of space quest with them. In terms of a sci-fi book for adults, a lot of the sci-fi that I've encountered has been big scale action kind of sci-fi, whereas this is more of a like a cozy sci-fi. We definitely deal with different points of action and different kind of politics, but what informs a lot of the plot are character interactions and character reactions to things rather than going out and fighting a battle with a full-scale army, for example, because you're in a spaceship fleet of 500. It's nothing like that. It's very much contained to these characters and their questions about the universe and cultures and each other. And that's ultimately why I really love these books. This one was by far, again, the strongest with plot. And if I could encourage you to start with Becky Chambers anywhere, I would say start here. If a full length book intimidates you, she does have some novellas as well, which I'll talk about later that are also worthwhile reading. But this one was very enjoyable to me. I gave it a four or four and a half stars and the ending made me quite emotional. So I would really love for other people to read it because Becky Chambers just manages to somehow invoke such emotion with her work. And that was definitely what happened in this book. The next book is A Closed and Common Orbit. And this is technically the sequel to the first book. So I don't want to say too much about this because it is a direct occurrence of events and side characters from what happened in the first book. So if I say too much it's going to spoil obviously the plot ending for The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. But in very small terms this is a book about identity and starting over and building your identity and who you are and I loved the way that this formed different kinds of connections with uh, robotics and artificial intelligence, with mechanics, with friends. I found it very interesting and it was quite enjoyable as well. In terms of where to start with Becky Chambers. I think if you wanted to start with this book, you definitely could. It doesn't require too much crossover knowledge from the first book, but again, if you start here, it will spoil you for the first book. So it's really up to you where you want to dive in. Ultimately, I would say start with book one and then go to this one, but if you want to start with this one, you can. It won't make you confused, it'll just make you wish you had read book one first because there is a lot of build up to this and if you miss that you'll get the same enjoyment but you just won't get the full understanding. So I think I gave this one a four or four and a half stars as well. I think it was pretty much on par for what I rated the first book but I think looking back on it in more of a reflective state now that I've read them a couple of years ago, I definitely enjoyed the first one more than I enjoyed this, but I have merits and enjoyments from both for different reasons. And also speaking of plot, I think this one has a decent amount of plot too, but a lot of it is character driven rather than things happening in terms of politics for argument's sake. It is very much driven by our protagonist in here, who I don't want to talk about because if I do, it will spoil events. So I'm just going to wrap up talking about this and go to her next book. This next book is probably one of my favourite books of all time. It's a record of a space one few and I struggle every single time to sum this up. It says from the ground we stand, from our ships we live, by the stars we hope. It follows humans who live on ships because they can't live on earth anymore. It follows different civilizations 
and how they interact because they're technically alien species. There are planets in here. We do get multiple perspectives. So it is a more complicated work of Becky Chambers, but it doesn't have that aggressive plot to it either. There is a rough plot tying everything together in the background. But if you are a plot reader, I don't know if you would love this book. I need a plot for a book to work for me, which is why I enjoyed this, but I also need characters to really make me feel things so that I can get invested in what's happening. And it really had that heavily at the forefront of the story. So even though there was that plot tying it together, again, this is very character driven. So if you're not a character reader, if you prefer a heavy plot, I don't know if Becky Chambers is going to be for you. And again, in this one, there is a link to the first book with the pilot named Ashby. So in this one, there is Tessa, who is the sister of of Ashby. That's the link here and it is a little bit further removed from the first two books so you could start here if you wanted to but there is a line or two of spoilers in this book about book one so just be warned. I don't know if you'll notice it when you read it because I didn't initially notice it and I had a gap between reading the first book to reading this one and it didn't really stand out to me. I just remember hearing Ashby's name and that's really it. I didn't pay too much attention. So you probably could get away with just reading this book and not reading the first two and you'd be fine. But again, like I said at the beginning of this video a couple of times, just read them all the way through. Trust me, it is worthwhile. And again, obviously I gave this five stars. It is one of my favorite books of all time. It just made my heart happy. It was a beautiful book. It had balance in it too. It made me sad and happy and I think that's really important going into a book. It has to kind of have both to pivot and bounce off each other. It can't just have all happiness. Otherwise why is it worthwhile? You've got to be sad and then you can be happy and that's what this book did to me. It was beautiful and it still sits in my heart and I can't wait to reread it. Now this last one is the fourth book in the Wayfarer series and it's The Galaxy and the Ground Within and of all of the books so far I found this one the hardest to connect with only because this one didn't really have many human characters, if any at all. So it's a little bit alienating, forgive the pun, but we've got a multitude of characters here. And the premise for this is essentially when a freak technological failure halts traffic to and from the planet Gora, three strangers are thrown together unexpectedly with seemingly nothing to do but wait. So again, Becky Chambers really traverses that space between cultures and there's a shift there with understandings and everybody is physiologically and physically really different from each other. So it was interesting to see those different senses come into the work as well. And that's one of the things that helped me imagine everything because it was very sensory and very identity focused. And I think those things are really important when you're setting up different kinds of alien species. You want to be able to kind of relate to them in a way and through a sensory kind of taste, feel, touch, appearance descriptor really helped with that. In terms of rating though, for me, this is probably a three or four stars because it took me a long time to get into. And I did listen to the audiobooks for all of these books. I liked the third one the best and I think it was really hard for this book to follow on to something that was one of my favourite books of all time. I think it's just a bar that's a bit too high. So for all intents and purposes this was still a brilliant book and it had those hallmarks of Becky Chambers through culture and identity and everybody being different but trying to unite together and navigate those differences too even when it became argumentative, uncomfortable or awkward. She manages to convey such an openness which is what I really love. So that is all for her her Wayfarer's books, but now I want to talk about her novellas. And firstly, I'm going to talk about A Psalm for the End of the World, which is her latest release upon filming this video. And it's a novella called Monk and Robot Book One. And this follows Dex, who is a non-binary tea monk, and they don't feel like they're fulfilled in life. They go off to learn becoming a tea monk, which in their world is like a fantasy world. It's quite revered. And whenever they visit different towns, the tea monk is kind of like a psychologist slash spiritualist slash just culturally very in touch with people and very trusted because of that role and that figure. So when they go to different towns, they make tea for different people with different troubles. They listen, they provide advice, they basically provide whatever the client needs in terms of emotional support, which is really beautiful, but Dex just doesn't feel fulfilled. So a long time ago, like a century ago in this world, robots used to serve humans. And so on the back of that, robots one day just decided not to serve humans anymore and they stood up and left. So Dex is trying to forge this new path for themselves. They don't really know what they want to do. They go off the beaten road on their journey to the next town and they run into a robot for the first time in a century. And that's where this story takes off. Again, it has those trademark Becky Chambers tones of different cultures and different 
confused creatures coming into each other's being and having to navigate those cultural differences and those gaps in understanding which she does very very well but in terms of the plot for this one it was almost non-existent so for me I only gave it a three stars and it was really hard for me to connect with it and to feel motivated while reading it it had the connection there with the emotion because I connected to Dex and the robot and I kind of understood their drives and motivations but at the same time I wanted a little bit more push from the plot and I think that might happen later on in the series. So it's a series that I'm going to continue reading because Becky Chambers is one of my favourite authors but at the same time if you are starting with this one you might be a little bit disappointed because you'd expect to say more plot and that wasn't there for this book in my personal opinion. Obviously everyone's opinion is different because reading is very subjective but to me personally I think it could have had a little bit more drive and push to it so that's why I want to recommend her last novella is one one that you start with because it was absolutely amazing. And that novella is To Be Taught If Fortunate and this follows four characters. They are sent into space and they have a time difference for sending messages to Earth for about 10 to 13 years or something. So in the future, instead of terraforming planets to sustain human life, explorers of the galaxy transform themselves. So these four people are different versions of scientists. I don't remember the entire categories they belong to when thinking back on this book because I read it a little while ago but the four key characters are exploring planets to see if they're livable or not and their philosophy is only leave footprints don't make any changes to the physiology or physical aspects of the world at all. We are just here to view and to study and we will leave and everything will be as we left it. And I loved the way that Becky Chambers again tapped those natural connections between these crewmates. Becky Chambers is also very queer positive and so there's always brilliant representation across her work for different non-binary characters, for different queer characters and it was no less wonderful in here as well in such a short amount of time too. There's a beautiful relationship between all of the characters we encounter here and somehow when I reached the end of this book Becky Chambers just sucker punched me emotionally and I started to well up with tears for just a particular conversation that happened and I don't know any other author that can do that to me in such a short space of time. So if you're going to start with Becky Chambers, you're not sure about her books, you want to start a novella but I've said maybe don't start with Monk and Robot yet because if you prefer a plot this has a little bit more of a plot to it than Monk and Robot did, I'd say start with this one because this was beautiful and I can't wait to reread it and it just made me full of such hope and wonder and intrigue and connection and I think that's really important. So that is the end of this particular author spotlight. If you are going to read Becky Chambers or if you've read her work let me know I would love to hear but thank you so much for watching this video. Come chat with me down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.